Hey, it's Aaron. Today we're going to talk about a 2020 Land Rover Discovery. This is the HSE package. It has the three liter uh, turbo uh, supercharged, supercharged six cylinder engine. This is a beautiful, beautiful rig. In the past, I've taken these and I've done a lot of fun stuff with them. This one has been no exception. There's a lot going on with this. It's a, a wonderful vehicle, very luxurious inside, uh, but not as luxurious as Range Rover, which would be the next level up. So let's talk about this a little bit. So this three liter supercharged engine is putting out 335 horsepower. Uh, that comes fairly late in the band. You have to go a little bit high for that, but not terrible. It's a little over 5,000. So you can still get it early enough that it can make some difference. What really matters though, when, especially off-road, but re really matters just driving around town and stuff is the torque. The torque on this is rated at 332 pound-feet. That comes far earlier. It's somewhere around 1400, I want to say, RPM. That's when you feel it. And that is what really matters because that's what gets you going from the stoplight. That's what gets you moving when you need to hurry up to get up on the freeway, those sorts of things. It's also when you're off-road, what really gets you around uh, obstacles and over things and through mud and whatever else. What you find with this is that it is just naturally good at off-road. So it just does it. You don't have to, the big difference, uh, people have asked me, you know, would you rather have a Land Rover or a, uh, say, Jeep or uh, even Toyota? Would you rather have a Land Cruiser, a Land Rover, or a Wrangler going off-road? Uh, and my answer is always, it depends on what kind of off-road you want to do. If you want to set and forget off-road where all you do is drive, this is your option. You don't need to do anything to make it work. It just does it. You point it in the direction you want to go and it goes. This does have off-road drive modes. It has modes that you can change to make that off-road happen, but you don't have to use them. It will figure it out on its own. You basically point it and shoot. With a Jeep, you have to move some levers, you have to twist some dials, you have to do stuff uh, because that's a Jeep thing. That's really what you wanna do in a Jeep. Toyota is somewhere right in the middle of that. So uh, for the most part, it's point and shoot, but you do have to do things like disconnect the sway bar if you're on say a 4Runner or a TRD Pro model of a 4Runner or Tacoma. Uh, whereas if you're in the big Land Cruiser, not so much, it doesn't have those things. It's again, mostly point and shoot, but you do have to physically shift some of the gears. Uh, the Land Cruiser is full-time four-wheel drive. This is more similar to an all-wheel drive system. So it's, it's, it moves the torque back and forth between the front and rear axle according to the situation it's in. You don't really have to do anything. Uh, Land Rover does rate this as all-wheel drive rather than four-wheel drive. So they list it as all-wheel drive. Now we have to remember that in, in Britain, right, in, in the land of the, of the Europe's, <laughs> this is uh, all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive are largely interchangeable. They don't think of it the way we Americans do, where we assume four-wheel drive means a transfer case that is forcing 50-50 between the axles. Uh, Europeans don't think that way. That, so with the Discovery, you get a beautiful around town, town drive. It drives really well. It's confident, it's, it's quiet, it's comfortable. It has all of those good things. Uh, you do have to move up, pay a little bit more money if you want some extras. This has the cooler in the uh, center console box. So the box between the two seats, it has a little cooler where you can turn it on, it acts as a, it's not a refrigerator, but it does cool whatever's in there. Keep it cool is the idea. Uh, you can get other things to add on to this. There's cooled seats and a few other things in other packages. Most, for the most part, to get past just the basics though, you really, which basics is a very, very subjective term here, because this is a very luxurious vehicle by anyone's standard. But uh, to get past that, uh, you really have to go to the Range Rover tag. But uh, there are, you know, there are things in Range Rover you can't get in here, uh, massaging seats, things like that. But beautiful, beautiful rig, nice to drive, runs really well, uh, gets up to speed quickly, feels really good to drive. It's just a great all-around vehicle and far more maneuverable than the big size would make you think. 
Now I will point out the third row is mostly kids only. It's difficult to get in and out of. Uh, the, be the second row seats, they, they move forward and fold. They fold down and move forward, but they do not tilt up or anything. So getting in and out is a little bit of a squeeze, especially if you got the badonk that I got. Uh, but the third row is mostly for kids because after that you have uh, limited leg room. You have the seats are low, so your knees are going to be up if you're if you're too tall, that sort of thing. Lots of cargo. I love the way the cargo is laid out. It's really a Land Rover thing. You open the back and there's a there's a, a piece that's sitting up um, that you can set your stuff up against so it doesn't come out, or you can fold that down and now you have an it's over the bumper, so now you can load in with a flat floor. Beautiful design, I really love that. Uh, one thing that this does not have that you can get with Land Rover are the electric seat deployments, which allows this, the third row seats to go up and down electrically, and the second row seats to go up and down electrically. It's not in this one, but you can get that. Uh, this has a wonderful adaptive cruise system, uh, so it does really well as far as keeping all of the stuff back and forth. So that's what I got. This is Aaron, and this is the 2020 Land Rover Discovery. Subscribe!